This is June 29th, which in the church calendar is the day of Peter and Paul, the Saints Peter and Paul. I'll have a little bit more about, about that in the sermon. Uh, the opening hymn is 868, Awake My Soul and With the Sun. We will um, remain seated until the final stanza of this hymn.
Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Additional psalm will sing is Psalm 46, responsibly by Holy.
This is a record of the Apostolic Council there. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So, being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers, who belonged to the party of the Pharisees, rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to, keep, and to order them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. And after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by putting, placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. And all the assembly fell silent. And they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has now related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with this the words of the prophets agreed, just as it is written, After this I will return, and I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins. And I will restore it, that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from of old. Therefore my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but to, should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, and from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. From ancient generations, Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he is read in every Sabbath in the synagogues. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens.
presentation, we'll take the following questions from Luther's, the fourth part of Luther's small catechism, his Christian questions with their answers. In uh, the conference, don't usually, I don't usually have the conference memorize a section, I make them familiar with it. It is in the small catechism and in our hymnals. Uh, the questions with their answers are actually a good outline for the um, for the examination of the catechumens, which I do. But we'll, practice, we'll recite uh, together the answers to questions 15 and 16 of this portion of the catechism. What should we do, then, when we eat his body and drink his blood and in this way receive his pledge? We should remember and proclaim his death and the shedding of his blood as he taught us. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Why should we remember and proclaim his death? First, so we may learn to believe that no creature could make satisfaction for our sins. Only Christ, true God and man, could do that. Second, so we may learn to be horrified by our sins and to regard them as very serious. Third, so we may find joy and comfort in Christ alone and through faith in him be saved. So I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, of the service, this is the day of St. Peter and St. Paul, apostles. I'm going to read a little bit about that and expound upon, expand upon that a bit. The festival of St. Peter and St. Paul is probably the oldest of the saints' observances, dating from about the middle of the third century. When the Christian church, we not only have the church year which follows the life of Jesus, but we also have particular days that are associated with, with saints. Um, that actually got very much expanded in the Roman church, in the Lutheran church, that was uh, pared back significantly. But still, having saints uh, rem rem brought to our remembrance in the uh, calendar, in part to remember their faith, and their life. An early tradition held that these two pillars of the New Testament church, Peter and Paul, were martyred on the same day in Rome during the persecution under Nero. In addition to this, joint commemoration of their deaths, both apostles are also commemorated separately. Not for their deaths, but Peter on January 18th for his confession of Jesus as the Christ, as we heard in our Gospel reading, Matthew 16, and Paul on January 25th for his conversion. In other words, that he was when Jesus appeared to him and he was brought to faith in Christ as the Messiah. The New Testament tells us much about both apostles. Peter was with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry and served as a leader among the disciples. Despite his steadfast faith, Scripture also records some of his failures such as his rebuke of Jesus, following right after his great confession of who Jesus is as the Christ of God, and his threefold denial of the Lord in Matthew 26. That was during Jesus' trial, of course, uh, in, the, uh, in the high priest's uh, residence courtyard. Following Jesus' ascension, Peter continued as a leader in the church. Paul, a devout Jew, also known as Saul, entered the scene as a persecutor of the church. Following his miraculous conversion in which the risen Christ himself appeared to him, Paul became a powerful preacher of the grace of God. During his three missionary journeys, uh, which are related, of course, uh, extensively in the book of Acts, and are very interesting reading, of course, and, and also able to connect with, with secular history of the area, Paul traveled throughout modern-day Turkey and Greece. The New Testament account of his life ends with Paul under house arrest in Rome, Acts 28, that's the end of Luke's two-volume series, his Gospel of Jesus and Luke, what we call the Gospel of Luke, and then the book of Acts. Although tradition holds that he went on to Spain before returning to Rome and ultimately being, being executed for for his Christian faith. Um, that seems like the, the letters of Paul and Timothy and Titus seem to go at some point in history past the time of his uh, house arrest in Rome. 
very interesting accounts there in, in Acts. And help us, we remember, the, the grace of God in Jesus Christ and how we are brought to faith in him. That, that apostolic council from Acts 15 brought Peter and Paul together, not for the first or last time, but um, that was a time when there was a, a big debate in the Christian church about whether Gentile converts to Christianity, to the faith, should have to follow all of those ceremonial regulations in the, uh, in the Old Testament. And thankfully, they recognized, under God, the Holy Spirit's guidance, that that was not a necessary requirement. We will join together in singing the canticle, the hymn of praise, the Te Deum, we praise you, God. Uh, we rise.
done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Merciful and eternal God, your holy apostles Peter and Paul received grace and strength to lay down their lives for the sake of your Son. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit, that we may confess your truth, and at all times be ready to lay our lives down for him who laid down his life for us, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, multiply your mercy on us, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Rejoice my heart, be glad and sing. We sing stanzas one, two, and seven. 